by the right of the council, by the will of the force, welcome back into another episode of the Galaxy Famous, you laugh at us while laughing with us, Jedi Talk Podcast, I am your, one of your co-hosts here on the High Council, Batomica, and thank you for following us at Jedi Talk Podcast on Instagram, youtube.com slash Jedi Talk, where... My other co-host of this evening just recently dropped a slamming review of the Episode 9 Kylo Ren helmet that just dropped from D23, and that is Evan T. Boucher. Evan, how the fuck are you today? Adiga and good journey. It's good to hear you. Good to talk to you again, Tom. We've missed yeah, you. Yeah, I'm back. It feels like Holy a lot's shit. been going on in life with, with all three of us, so... It's Eventually, true. we'll all three get back together, but yeah, that like review of the helmet video was... It was a ton of fun, and like I discovered a ton of that stuff on the fly, as you saw. But it was the first review I've done in the new Star Wars setup we have here. So the counter space yeah, wasn't call- as great as like the apartment, because we just cleared the kitchen counter and used oh, that. Oh, sure. But yeah. the backdrop was better here, so there's that. Mm-hmm. But that helmet is badass. I I love it. Taylor grabbed it as we didn't even have like a second to question it. it was, she was like. Our good buddy Justin told us that it had dropped at Hollywood Studios, so we were Ooh. in between leaving Animal Kingdom and about to go drop me off at work. And on the way, it was like, hey, we got to get this. It's out. So Taylor sprinted to um, Tatooine Traders, and they only had like 10 of them, they said. So we, oh, wow. we grabbed one of them. Justin actually said he made it later in the day, and he grabbed one, so thankfully he got one. But those things were flying off the shelves, even though everybody hates Episode Nine. so hey. <laughs> People will hate on everything, but buy up the merch like it's going out of style. Oh yeah! Like, like I I saw people want those acolyte figures, but yeah, I've seen those same people rip on the show. So yep. yeah, yeah, we could start there. Like, like where the fuck have I been the past two shows? So, um, I mean, it's I, I was just telling my wife this. I feel like Jedi Talk always has a stretch every year of shows where all three of us are not on for I don't know maybe a month, month and a half. August for me, just for whatever reason, culminated in one of the busiest months of my life. And I missed the show two weeks ago, not because of how busy. I mean, I was busy with work, and then I was leaving. But for anybody who's local to Orlando, right, especially around the theme park area, or or her, you've been here and driven I-4, you can sympathize with the fact that you get caught in something, especially when a rainstorm breaks out in the middle of God knows what. Um, I, 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 I was hours away from making it to Brad's house and Evan and Brad were waiting on me and I just, I couldn't in good conscience make them wait. And I was sitting in traffic and Evan can tell you, I was increasingly swearing up and down in our group chat, getting ready to get out of my car and throw it like the incredible Hulk into the Disney world sign, Oh yeah, which I had been, which I had been staring in my rear view mirror for hours. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, I've sat in that same traffic getting to you and getting to Brad's and getting to work. So it's it's ridiculous. Yeah. And a lot of the people that listen to it, to the show, all of our friends, they have experienced that same traffic. So mm-hmm. so they know. Um, it, yeah, it's, yeah, it's it, terrible. It, it's it, it's a pain in the padded ass. But um, so that's that's, you know, you know, the boys took it on then and they followed up with a great show. And then I wasn't on last week because um, that had been scheduled. I flew out to Chicago um, for one of the only things I ever fly out to Chicago for is to see Metallica. Whoa, whoa. It wasn't to go see Kyle? <laughs> Never. I mean, he was there <laughs> okay. as, as as like a shitty, like, you win a toaster prize. Like, oh, Kyle <laughs> was there. Hooray. Okay. Yeah, yeah that short shit. Um, so uh, he, uh, we went to Shake Shack, you know, the day I arrived. and um, Of course, as you we, do. We, we, as, as you do. It was right off of uh, Michigan Avenue there, right across from the... Art Institute, I believe it, that was, um, but we, but we, we were we were chilling, eating there, and um, you know we had to wait for Kyle after the fact after we ate, and we were like, "Where's Kyle? Where's Kyle? Where's Kyle?" And we, he he was blowing up the Shake Shack bathroom because he just couldn't handle his shake. Mm. So that happens, yeah. totally happens. True story. I, I get it. Yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to share that embarrassing story that Kyle blew up the bathroom at the Shake Shack. On Michigan Avenue in Chicago, Illinois. You heard it here first, Angela. Well, it happens to the best of us, and it definitely happens to the worst of us. So, mm-hmm. sure does. But so you missed so, the show a couple weeks ago for a stupid, I did. stupid reason. But then you missed the last show for an awesome reason. So hey, that's right. It evens out. That's right. I was um, 
real high level of crap. You, if you want details, I'll, I'll plug forth on the box. Go listen to that. Kyle and I will talk about that because we were at both shows together. I was also there with my uh, another great best buddy of mine, Tim Marciano, drummer of Scourge. He and I stayed at the same hotel. Um, we got brunch together. It was great. Um, he he met Metallica, or, uh, two members of Metallica, Lars Ulrich and Rob Trujillo on Sunday. Um, and he was in a snake pit no, both nights. I was on the floor both nights. Kyle was on the floor with me the second night. Just awesome. Just just badass shit. I had a I, uh, I had a cause patch that oh, I wanted yeah, to yeah. throw on stage. How'd that go? <laughs> I didn't throw it on stage. No, right. I, I ultimately, I don't ever want to do anything that would ever get me barred from ever going to a Metallica concert right. again. And, and even if it's just a tiny little patch, yeah, not worth. I don't it. want. I don't want someone. It's it, it's not worth someone to think I'm right. Um, some some crazy fuck, you know. You got logic, so. you got common sense, you got courtesy. Thank you. Crazy, crazy mm-hmm. thing. Is, a lot of f- crazy traits to have in this modern world. Yeah, yeah. A lot of fans on the floor do not have common courtesy or decent human traits. You know. Dang. If anyone else out there has been to uh, probably just a heavy metal concert, maybe hard rock, um, and you're on the floor, you're at General Mission. If you've been to a Metallica concert specifically, in you're on the rail like I was night one. You know you're gonna run into some some riffraff, and I ran into some non decent human beings, Evan. <laughs> Dang, uh, scum and villainy there <laughs> that Obi Wan talks about. Yeah. It's just it's just people just trying to like take advantage and like they show up at the eleventh hour and try to like you know steal a spot or somebody tried to start a fight with the dude behind me. So <laughs> typical Tuesday. That's fine. Typical Tuesday. Yeah. Typical Tuesday. Yeah, but Metallica, good times had by all. Hey, but, there you um, go. We're, back and better than ever on Jedi Talk. Uh, anything exciting happened to you in the, in the past couple of weeks that I might have missed out? Oh, by the way, we're just me and Evan are, are here talking. I don't even think I mentioned Brad's. Brad's not with us today. Um, you know, like I said, there's like a combination. Like he's he's got some stuff going on and, you know, it was up in the air. He might be here. He might join. But um, we're hoping to uh, get him, get the three of us together for something very special next week. We're still hammering out the details, so more information to come on that. Yes. If it's not next week, it's going to be in the near future. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you, yeah I mean, it's got to be. You alluded to Brad being gone. How we, you mentioned how it's always less, yeah. a stretch of the year where all three of us kind of can't figure it out for life reasons. So, right. But in August is a big month, especially this year, because this, this August is the fifth anniversary of galaxy's edge here for us it is, disneyland yeah. already had their celebration and the merch was already dropped so we all have the merch um but we will celebrate in the next coming weeks so the yeah, first time i'm going back Arizona. to Arizona since our event in march so it'll oh, be nice no to sure. go back i'll get the loft cat mug finally oh nice yeah um, that one's good yeah and then tomorrow good... hopefully fingers crossed i don't do online shopping for reasons that I never have good luck with it, but Taylor ordered that Sith dagger. So tomorrow, fingers crossed, we will have that in the mail, and there'll probably be a review video on that too. Yeah, toss that up on youtube.com slash Jedi Talk immediately, and I'll watch. I'll be the first view. I want to check that out. That that dagger, one of the, you know, you could say a lot of things about Episode Nine, but they gave us some pretty cool Star Wars artifacts, and this dagger is one of them. Right, it's a prop. It's an artifact. Like, it's... You know, I like episode nine, but I ha- can't, you can't really deny or defend that that part was kind of convoluted and goofy. And I don't know, you think about it too hard, doesn't make sense at the moment. But hey, like I, you said, it's a cool prop, cool artifact. I thought he was about to call Dragon Zord with that, with that sword. Yeah, right. With that dagger. That's a Power Rangers reference for you 90s kids. And I think like at the time, maybe it was... I don't think there was any leaks or rumors of it, but I think at the time in the theater, we all were like, is that the like the Mortis, the Dagger of Mortis? And I'm like, that would be cool, but I don't know how it ties oh. in. So I, I can't remember. Mm-hmm. That might have been in the theater. We kind of looked at each other and said that, but it obviously oh, wasn't. I... But with Dave Filoni at the Got helm, it, it could have been. Oh, sure. You never know with him. It might pop up sure. in Ahsoka Season 2. I mean, you never know. You could. Hey, hey, speaking of Dave Filoni at the helm, you know, something leaked. Don't be telling people, but, yeah. you know, it. D23, Evan, you know, that, that Mando and Grogu trailer, which I, I think it's probably the only footage that they filmed for this thing, because I think they just started. Yeah, I, um, I feel like they were like, let's just put together five minutes of footage real quick. We got the volume, like, that's all we need. Yeah. We got the puppet of Grogu, we got the shiny armor for Mando, doesn't matter who's wearing it, just yeah, jump in I the wa- volume. I wonder if they just cranked out Pedro's scenes, because he's going to jump over to do Fantastic Four. 
Oh, he's in the Fantastic Four. Yep. Oh. Yeah, he's playing. He's playing Mr. Fantastic. Nice. Um, yeah, um, they might have anyway. just filmed it at the same time as like they had him do something for Fantastic Four. I don't know how far along they are with that, but you never know. No, they haven't. St- they, my understanding, they have. Oh no, I think they have started filming it already. Fantastic Four already. So maybe they just roped him in at the same time. They're like, hey, maybe they did. Already doing yeah. that. Jump over Jeez. to this stage and do that. But dudes and everything. Yeah, yeah dudes at least everything. his voices. So. Yeah. <laughs> but. I watched him on yeah. Hot Wings the other day. It was hilarious. Oh, was it? Yeah, or Hot Ones. Sorry, Hot Ones. But yeah, he, Hot ones. he's a... I love that dude. But yeah, that, that trailer looked amazing. And I don't know if we really got the whole trailer leaked. Maybe we missed a little bit of it. But what we saw was incredible. My only well, question what, is, yeah. was that a new Razor Crest? Like the same class of ship? Yeah. It has to be, because like, it's gone. So... Well, I was stoked to see who was piloting said new Razor Crest. Yeah, everybody was. Mr. Zeb. Mr. Zeb Aurelius. Ah, God. He's back. Fuck yeah. I can't wait. And He's such a good character. Ilum is probably back. It's got to be Ilum. I it, think, it's yeah. It's making people think it's Hoth. But yes. Do you think people are going to be pissed that it's not Hoth? Or no, I no, have no. one other question. I have one other question. Do you think people are going to... Um, or, or I'm sorry. Do you think like maybe Filoni and Fa- and Favreau kind of are like they're gonna make it Hoth just to kind of sprinkle a little like member berries in for those original trilogy fans who watch the Mandalorian, but the moment you throw a sequel into it, they start to bitch. No, because I, I don't think those people you're talking about even know that Ilum is in the sequels. They just think Star Killer Base is Star Killer Base. They don't know. Oh, that's a good. That's a good call. And I think they have enough member berries showing AT-ATs and <laughs> Snowtroopers. Like, those things, I mean, I, I like that too. I'm not saying that's exclusive to those kind of mm-hmm. fans. I was hyped to see an AT-AT again. Like, I love those things. But then I was like, this has to be, to in the trailer, probably have some people think it's Hoth. But it has sure. to be Ilum to connect to Jedi Fallen Order, to connect to the sequels in Star Trek. Well, Force Awakens, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, like it's it's been confirmed, but that would really like really confirm it to see in a in a movie that hey they were taking Ilum and turning it into Starkiller Base. Watch it be just some other snowy planet, oh. some brand new planet. Watch it be that bullshit. I would not be okay with that. I'm I've said it hundreds of times. I'm tired of new planets every five minutes. But I know it, it's it's I, I'm like I'm like fifty fifty there because like. Actually, more like 70-30. 70-30 on your side because it feels lazy, right? It feels lazy just to write a new planet for something. But then again, the galaxy is enormous. Yeah. And, like, our galaxy, there's there's shit that we don't even know about, right? And, and the, you know, the planets we do know about, and there's ones that we know, but we just don't, 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 don't know what they look like, and then there's so much unknown. So it's like... Yeah, it makes sense that there would be planets that just we don't know about yet, right? But yeah. I'm with you, though. It's 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 like a weird back and forth. So, well, to put it in probably a actual sense, where I'm actually thinking about it and trying to put logic to it instead of just being upset for no reason. If you're gonna just do another new planet and it really doesn't affect the story or anything, like that's fine. Who cares? Just throw in a new planet. But when it's an right. opportunity like this, where it's a movie that can connect the originals and the Clone Wars and every show to the sequels and video games to the sequels. If you don't choose the option to do Ilum, I feel like it's a missed opportunity. So in that sense, I would be upset. I agree. I agree. Especially with Lucasfilm, or at least feeling like they're trying to do this connectivity or make the sequels matter more. Yeah. To what they put out, right? You know, there's, there's, they've done so much of that, and a lot of people aren't really paying attention because it's not in your face, right? It's not movies, like, and they don't want to acknowledge it. So that, that too, yeah. that's a, that's a very important piece to it. If you pay attention to Mandalorian season three with like the Shadow Council shit, that's the start of the sequel. Project Necromancer, you got to pay attention to that. You know, Disney's giving it to us. Yeah, you know, they're 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 feeding it there, so. I'm with you. Yeah, it, it 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 really has to be Ilum, and you know maybe it could show um, Mando, you know, you know, playing a pivotal role in stopping something, or maybe that's where he perishes, you know, because I feel like that's inevitable for him in this movie. Yeah, it could be. I mean, 
at that point, we could see an older version of the Hux that we saw in Mando. You know, we could see Brendel sure. Hux, but even older, a little bit older, because it's not a huge time jump from season three, but we could see him actually establishing something on Ilum for the First Order to kind of taking over what the Empire started and continuing it. What was that called? Project Augur or something like that? Oh, I think so, yeah. Yeah. I, I want to call something in that leaked trailer, too, um, that I think was my favorite part. And it was something very simple, but it's Din walking into, like, an Imperial meeting, and he just takes a bunch of dudes out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that looked good. It's just, it just makes me feel like, it's, it's I, I love that shot, and I love that scene, and who knows if we'll ever even get it in the movie. It could just be something they filmed and they eventually cut out. But it's like, okay, here's kind of the Mando we remember, you know, from the get-go. Yeah. Kind of, and he's determined, you know, what's he doing there? Why is he taking out remnants of the, you know, is it a bounty? Is he working for, you know, the New Republic? So, you know, you know stuff like that. So, On a more somber note, it really sucks more that I think about it that uh, Carl Weathers won't be in that movie. Because oh. you were mentioning, like, why is Mando doing it? I was like, oh, maybe Grief has sent him on a mission. But I was like, wait, Grief, they can't really What if they do... killed Grief? Oh, yeah, man. That would be rough. Mm. I wonder what they're going to do with oh, I wonder how they're going to write him. Yeah, that's that's tough, man. There should be. I'm hoping that there's a um, statue for Grief Karga in yes. um, at yeah. Navarro. I'm sure maybe yeah. IG88 has like, or IG11, man, sorry. IG11, IG11 yeah. might like try to commission it, and maybe it was his idea. Cause it's like, well, he built a statue of me. I must build one of him. Maybe oh, that, yeah. that would be cool. It's right there. Yeah. Dave, I know you listen. Dave Filoni, cowboy hat. Cowboy hat. Cowboy hat. I'm talking to the cowboy hat. Well, if hat there's now. not a statue of Carl Weathers, there should be a statue of a wolf because he loves wolves. It's true. So. There's, there's, there's probably like 12 statues of wolves oh, that yeah. we haven't noticed yet. Oh, it's, yeah. like, it's like Easter eggs every episode. <laughs> and I, I saw Anzellans in the trailer. I don't know if it's true. Some people were saying it's confirmed that one of them was Babu Frick. And I'm like, I, I don't know. Yeah, probably. Because there was yeah. in Zellens in season three, and none of them were Babu. But True. If there is a Babu, hey, sequels, even more. So Yeah, very much so. But yeah, that looked very, good. very excited. What is that, May yeah. of 2026? I believe so. So we got two years, basically. We do. Yeah, That's yeah, rough. You know. <laughs> oh, that's a long time. Well, in the meantime, we have... The real trailer that we got, which is the trailer to Skeleton Crew. Yes. and Which I'm, is Goonies yeah. and Star Wars, which I'm okay with. Yeah, I'm excited I'm to watch it, about and that. I mm-hmm. look forward to it. I, it was just the first, like, I don't know how long the trailer was, I forget. But, like, it felt like the first 30 seconds, to me, were just, like, that looks like they filmed it in a suburb in Orlando. Like, I was like, that's just a normal-ass suburb. But aside from that, that once I got past that, the rest of the trailer looked amazing. It looked awesome. I think what they were trying to convey and what they will convey in this series is that these kids or these main characters are bored out of their mind, right? Like, yeah. Now, um, you know, you know, the Goonies that you know weren't necessarily bored, but but they're they're you know were pining for adventure kind of thing, and they were doing it to save their house. But like in this sense, I think these kids, you know, they're gonna they're gonna find. And first off, I love what they stumble upon an old Jedi temple. I'm in, yeah. right? I'm in already with that. Like, okay, yeah, yep, can't wait. And we now know Jude, Jude Law's character is a Jedi, so or that's true. I don't think that, like that was like confirmed until now. So that's you know, yeah, the that's trailer cool. sure said it was. So. Yeah. Which hey, we have a Jedi. Okay, cool. Another new Jedi. Great. <laughs> um. I guess that's kind of like the thing with the planets, right? There's there's so many, and there's the, yeah. the propaganda talk, but that's a that's a conversation for another Yeah, time. I've always said that. I'm tired of being like, oh, another Jedi survived. Oh, another Jedi survived. I know. But I think there was like 10,000 in Order 66 that were alive. So, I mean, statistically, you would think they, they, yeah. 100 would seep through and survive. So I feel like... Easily. We haven't, Easily. We haven't reached 100. I feel like it's only around maybe like 40 yeah Ish. i think that's being generous yeah, yeah it probably is so like as long as it doesn't get to be like three thousand lived then i guess it's you know it's fine so like right now mm-hmm. it seems like it's a lot but when you think about it ten thousand were alive and only 30 or 40 survived not bad 
So I think the point of the suburban Star Wars is just we're bored and nothing happens here. You know, it's, it's it's trying to connect us, to connect us to just say like, oh yeah, you know, we, we get it when there's nothing to do. Not saying everybody watching Star Wars lives in suburban America, right? But it's just kind of like a, it's just kind of like a way to to show like these these kids got nothing going for them, I think. And yeah. We'll see how, I, I think it will be used sparingly True. in the I was, show itself. Yeah. So. I was thinking that same thing. Their, the main setting of the show is them leaving that area and going to the Jedi Temple and then being in the ship called the Onyx Cinder and going on adventures in the galaxy. It's a good name. So Onyx Cinder. It's a cool, it's a cool looking ship too. It's like kind of a freighter, kind of like a Corellian freighter a little bit, but kind of like a transport shuttle. It's a cool design. I like it. Interesting. It's the first time we've seen it in action because we've talked about on the show, the Lego set dropped a few weeks before the trailer. So we saw it in Lego and everyone was like, I don't know, but now we've seen it in action. So it's nice to see the real version instead of just the Lego one. As much as I love Legos, I want to see the real one. um, Speaking of Lego, we'll have to talk about that coming up. Yeah. Um, The rebuild the galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but we'll wrap up skeleton crew. So, Anything else jump out that, that 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 you like? You know, I'm into this because it's a Star Wars show and and like nothing from the trailer. And again, I had no expectations because I really didn't know what the show was about. Same. So it's like, and okay, we still don't I'm, really know. We just know it's kids yeah. with a Jedi. Like that's that's all we know. Potentially the spawn of Max Rebo, maybe yeah. along with him. Yeah, but I am I'm in the minority where I have I don't know if I've ever even watched the Goonies. But if I have, I don't really have a connection to it. And sure. I definitely have never watched Stranger Things. I know Taylor loves it. Everyone loves it. But I haven't watched that. So I don't really have a connection to this genre of film and media. But it looks mm-hmm. good. And I'm excited to watch it. So, Okay. Yep. I'm I'm Stranger Things fan too. And it's it's uh, good stuff. Um, I got more of a Goonies vibe than I did Stranger Things right now. But you think I would at least like most of the Goonies? Because isn't there like a pirate ship and like... Treasure oh, yeah. and like yeah. Oh yeah. That's my thing. One eyed Willie. Yeah, yeah. You would you, you would you'd love the Goonies, yeah. You should if you have a couple hours, check it out. Yeah. I'm sure it's on a streaming service somewhere. Yeah, for sure. Probably Peacock, I'd imagine. I don't know. I don't know. We'll, Who owns it? Yeah. You, we'll does Universal it own it? <laughs> I don't know. I assume they do, but maybe not. It's either them or Paramount Plus, maybe, but I'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah, figure it out, figure it out. So um yeah, let's jump into, so it's the, the Lego Rebuild the Galaxy, which is non-canon people. These are just fun, you know, animated Lego, 45-minute to an hour movies. And this Rebuild the Galaxy one is, you know, I think the closest we'll get to a Star Wars what if. And I think that the fact that they're doing with Lego is awesome. And they're not, like, messing with it in canon. So Really, most of them kind of do, like, what if things, except the summer vacation. That was the only one that didn't do, like, what ifs. It almost did like right. a sequel, kind of, but it, it's still non-canon. I love it and watch it all the time, but non-canon. Um, like the Christmas one was definitely non-canon, and it was kind of what if because it was like they found a time travel thing similar to um, this new one that's coming out. And then the Halloween one was a lot of what if. It was just like, what if Luke Skywalker joined the Empire? You know, like that kind of thing. Oh, oh, that's right, that's right. But that's, oh, yeah, so that that's seems right. to be the way they're kind of taking all these Lego shorts or movies that they're doing but i love all of them i definitely am happy that they're not canon because some of it just definitely should not be canon but i still love them and enjoy them because it's lego and it's star wars how could i not right that's true true they produce some good content there so yeah and we're getting Um, a few actual like original voice cast too i think mark hamill's doing luke I want to say. Sure sounded like it yeah billy d has done lando so if lando's in this he's probably doing lando again uh, Anthony Daniels always does 3PO, so he'll be 3PO in this, which is funny because it's like a dark side 3PO, so Anthony Daniels gets to be evil for a little bit. Hell yeah. I'm sure he'll, I'm sure he'll love doing that. And then, I mean, it's kind of original cast, but it's kind of not because James Arnold Taylor always does Obi-Wan. So he's not Alec Guinness, of course, and he's not Ewan McGregor, yeah. but he has done... Obi Wan more than anybody else has technically because he's true, been he him in the Clone Wars and Rebels. So James always does uh, the Obi Wans that are Lego too. So if that's the case, if he shows up, we'll have some James Arnold Taylor action. But the sets so far that have been made from the show 
I've only got one of them, but I want to buy the Falcon eventually. But the Lego sets have been awesome. So if that's the best thing that comes out of this, I'm happy. But if the movie is great <laughs> and the sets are great, I'm more than happy. Congrats on your new Lego set. Yes. Yeah. Um, I want to jump back. You mentioned C-3PO, and I just want to real, mention real quick. I was on Star Tours the other day, and I think I, I, um, I got Exegol for the first time ever. Oh, first time ever? Um, yeah, I know. Wow. And, and I was, yeah, and, and I just must have been luck of the draw. And um, I loved how 3PO turns and basically delivers a varied line of what he says in Rise of the Skywalker to the to uh, the crew yeah. on Star Tours. I, I, I thought that was brilliant. Exegol so. might be my favorite sequence. It's just it's a good one. It's kind of different, you know. You like the the tie gets like hooked on you and it drags you. Yep. And then you end up blowing up one of the uh, the star destroyers. It's it's different. Yeah. But I think I it might it be is. one of my favorites. Yeah, we went to. I had gone to Kef Burr before, but we went to Kef Burr and got BB-8, and then ended up at Exegol and back to Batu. Nice. I wonder how randomized the Ahsoka and Cassian Andor and uh, Mando scenes are now. I haven't since done it they since start... they've switched back, so I don't know. Since they switched back, actually the first time I went when they switched back, that's when I got my complete, completed the trio and I got Cassian. Nice. Um, but ever since, I've done Star Tours since then, and it's 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 been a, f- uh, a, a few times, and it's it's always been something old. You know, something older that I've that I've seen many a time, except for today, obviously with Exegol. But yeah, interesting. So yeah, um, something we haven't seen is Star Wars Outlaws, and I can't believe that's just creeping up. Um, yeah, you know, I've peeled myself away from paying attention to anything else coming out of here. I've I've heard, I've read, I've seen posts that gameplay footage more that they didn't want us to see might have been leaked, or yada 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 something i don't know with this game it's just i i just want to get it and play it right i don't want to experience it before yeah lucas games feels like or, or wants us to experience it right i need to go in and pre-order it and um you know we had discussed on jedi talk or, or in our group chat and um we haven't really mentioned it more but we kind of had this idea of like i might play it in chunks and then we would all like comment on it live and release episodes like that. So yeah, that we, would be fun. We kind of threw that idea around for Survivor, but looking back, I don't even know if Survivor would have worked for that. Its format seems very different. True, but it, you, know, I, we'll, you know, we'll have to hook the you know we'll we'll have to link the audio in to yeah, um, you know, into our headphones and what you know with the episode that we upload so people can actually hear and what we're doing. I mean, they won't see it, but at least hearing the dialogue would be pretty cool. Yeah. It put context to what we're talking about. It's harder to do that. Like a watch along for a video game because it's not a set runtime. Oh, right. Like one person. Right. Could, and this has different paths is what they're making. It seem like you might not oh. have the same middle of your story, but you have the same beginning and end. I used to, yeah, I used to, um, it was crazy. I used to be able to put YouTube videos on, you know, kind of, and I'm sure other people can do this. And like the background when I needed to focus on work and oh, yeah. I would crank out work, right? And now the videos though, I use, I, there was like a stretch I'd go through watching videos of this crazy good video gamer um, who was good at Resident Evil um, do uh, uh, just, just like beat these games in like hours. But then like one of the one I was watching, like like t- to allude to what you were saying, he was playing, he was playing, he was playing. He's like, oh, this video is going to be over in like another 20 minutes. I know where he's at. And then he like died. He was playing like a no save run. Ooh. And then he had to start over. So it's like, oh, this video has like another three hours. Yeah. Like it could have <laughs> so, been done in 20 minutes, but now exactly. it's not. Yeah. So that's why I like the idea of us releasing the episodes like that. Like, so kind of do them in like episodic. So yeah. Chunks and we'll like have that. someone at the helm who actually is decent or good at video games uh, as opposed to Brad and I who Brad I, he's probably better than me and then you have me who's just terrible at it Brad's good at um the, what is it the uh, rogue uh squadron? rogue squadron game yeah, yeah that's true rogue squadron games um speaking of you know something similar like that I just um any chance I got it was it was it hasn't been much chances to play I've been playing Battlefront 2 mm-hmm. um and um, you know the scenes when you're uh, the Empire still. I, I, her name's escaping me. Iden. It's very late. Iden Versio. Yeah, yeah. Iden Versio. There we go. 
good character. Oh yeah, great character. Great character. Um, when you're flying the the Tie Fighters, it's like it took me a while to get, to get used to the fucking flying those things and shooting at Rebel pilots. Yeah, that it's a, tough. a rare instance <laughs> where they actually let you do that, and that happens in a game. I know. I know. That was wild. Disney did that, people. By the way. Yeah. Disney did that. So stop your fucking bitching. <laughs> With, Anything else, Seven? With, I know uh, uh, we were thinking about keeping it a little bit shorter today, but what else we got? Yeah, well, with the, the gameplay that has come out of Outlaws, there was one maybe about a month ago that I watched, but they have done a few since then, and I've just stopped watching them. I'm not going to be Me buying too. it opening day or whatever because I don't have a next-gen console even, but I was still like, I don't need to watch all this right now. I'll either play it at Tom's, watch Tom play it, or somehow I'll, I'll see it organically. So I'm like, I don't need to Definitely. be watching all this right now. Definitely. But it looks great. Def- Definitely excited it for it. It does look great. I'm excited. So <laughs> anything else you want to chat about before we kind of call it a show today? Good, sir. Well, today, season two of Young Jedi Adventures oh, that's right. on Disney+. Plus. So I had a few on in the background today. I need to sit down and kind of actually watch them because I watched all of season one, and they're perfect for what they are. They're not made for us, but I still Mm-mm. they're still yeah. good. I can still say they're good for what they are. Like, I'm never going to sure. like just throw it on just out of like... I'm bored. I need something to watch. If I've already seen them, once I've seen all of them, I'll probably never watch them again. But they're not for me. But they're I like I them. Need... They're good for what they are. Nubs is awesome, like always. Though you can't deny Nubs. Can't deny Nubs. And they've also Nobody's been doing said like, that except for you. Yeah. And my Nubs plush sitting here behind me. Oh boy. But uh, they put a few like YouTube, plush YouTube shorter videos too that are on like Star Wars Kids that feature Yoda and Nubs and all the characters too that are really cute they're good for what they are i just don't know i don't think we'll ever see how that series ends because it probably can't really end well even though it does take place well before acolyte so it's not going to be like chimere comes and kills all the kids but you know it's we'll probably yeah. never see what happens to them so it's kind of good and bad yeah, like the... ah, we'll never know their whole story but like we probably don't want to i got evan over here wanting a a, a preschool <laughs> uh, a TV show made for preschool kids. Yes. He, he wants a complex story about how the characters are get, get written off. Oh, yeah. Gotta have it. Good. You, I mean, I think there's a number you can call for that. <laughs> there's probably multiple numbers I could call for that. Yeah. And that's about that's about where we wrap it up. But you guys I mean, have been yeah. great. We've been Jedi talking. <laughs> <laughs> if this was a visual medium, I'd be blinking twice if I needed something right now. Yeah, yeah exactly. So uh, f- thanks again for following us at Jedi Talk Podcast on Instagram and that YouTube where Evan's going to be dropping that dagger review very, very, very soon. YouTube.com slash Jedi Talk. Um, I, I, Brad, Brad normally starts it off there. Yeah. What were you going to say, Evan? I don't usually like to do this kind of thing, but I feel like our helmet review was the first one out there. So, was it really? I feel like it was. I haven't seen it anywhere else on YouTube. So, you, okay. my YouTube recommendations are usually nothing but Kylo Ren things. So, interesting. I'm surprised nobody did it from like D23. I've seen videos of the Star Tours vehicle. Already. Oh, yeah, I've seen people have done those. Of those. So, that's yeah. already out there, but I don't think I've seen a helmet one. I could be wrong. I just haven't seen okay. it myself. And maybe the same can be said with the dagger. No one has done it yet. Ours could be the first one out there. So if you want to know more about that dagger, just stay tuned for us in the next, hopefully, two days at the most. We'll see. Well, you heard the man. And everybody, thanks for listening. Stay safe. May the Force be with you. Always and kabooey Rise, Jedi. <laughs>